Well, today we're going to go to Luke chapter uh, 19 and we're going to read verses 1 to 10. Luke chapter 19, verses 1 to 10. Before we do so, I'm going to pray today. And I'm going to pray that the Holy Spirit comes upon us <clears throat> exactly where we are right now. Why don't we begin? In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. From my head to my heart, across the entirety of my life, may the power and the victory of the cross be upon me and in me. Loving God, today as we unfold the scriptures, wherever we are watching from, Lord, whether we're in the room or we're somewhere around the world, whether we're watching it just by ourselves, we're watching it with all of our impact as hosts in all the countries they are around the world, Lord, speak to us, allow your presence to fill the space, the room where we are right now. May your spirit, Holy Spirit, drop upon us into our hearts right now where we are. Father, we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's go straight to the scriptures and let's read Luke chapter 19, uh, verse 1. And it says this, He entered Jericho, that's Jesus, and was passing through it. And a man was there named Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector and was rich. He was trying to see who Jesus was, but on account of the crowd, he could not because he was short in stature. So he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore tree to see him because he was going to pass that way. When Jesus came to the place, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, hurry and come down, for I must stay at your house today. So he hurried down and was happy to welcome him. All who saw it began to grumble and said, he has gone to be the guest of one who is a sinner. Zacchaeus stood there and said to the Lord, look, half of my possessions, Lord, I will give to the poor. And if I've defrauded anyone of anything, I will pay back four times as much. And then Jesus said to him, today salvation has come to this house because he too is a son of Abraham. For the son of man came to seek out and to save the lost. What an amazing passage of scripture. It is just a phenomenal passage of scripture. I first came and heard this story when I was in, when I was in, in my second year at school, I was just a little bloke, and I remember it. I remember this story, and 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 I kind of interpreted it at a, at a child level. You know, if you've been doing bad things, you need to change when you meet Jesus. That was kind of if you said to me in year two, that's pretty much what I'd have told you the story was about. <clears throat> about, and let's go to verses one and two. And let's read this story. Now he was, he entered into Jericho and was passing through it. And a man there named Zacchaeus, he was a chief tax collector and was rich. Now a tax collector, uh, a tax collector, uh, many of you will know this, but a tax collector was someone who was appointed at that point in time by the Roman army to put a tax upon all of the lands and places where the Romans had conquered around the world. And that tax was taken back to, the, to Caesar in Rome. And what they would do is they would appoint someone from the people, from the country that they had, that they had conquered, to be the local tax collector, to collect this tax that they said it would be. The tax collectors often were people who would cream off the top, put extra tax there, so they were often despised. They were called in the scriptures sinners. They were people, as it says here, they were rich. Look at it again. He entered Jericho and was passing through it. <clears throat> and there was uh, and, uh, a man there was named Zacchaeus and he was a chief tax collector and was rich. Now, uh, here's Jesus. Jesus comes into Jericho and, and he's passing through. I don't know if you've ever driven through towns and cities, you're wanting to go somewhere, but you've got to go through other places. Jesus is just passing through. His, his, his goal and his aim, his, his destination is not that place. And, and he pass, he's passing through. And as he does, he comes across this man named Zacchaeus. Now, Zacchaeus means pure. That's the meaning of the word pure. But, and, and Zacchaeus' life is about to change. In verse 3, it says this, He was trying to see who Jesus was. Zacchaeus was trying to see who Jesus was. But on account of the crowd, he could not because he was short in stature. 
So he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore tree to see him because he was going to pass that way. These two verses are packed with a whole pile of information. information. Uh, Jesus was going to pass through. Zacchaeus, hearing that he was coming, decides, I want to go and see who this guy is. Who is this that these stories are about? But the problem is, is that he's short and there's a crowd and standing at the back of the crowd, he can't see. And so he thinks to himself, how am I going to be able uh, to see? And my, my oldest daughter, Emma, married a man by the name of Ronan. Ronan is six foot, so many inches tall. Emma's considerably shorter than that. And Emma's often said to us if they, if, she, if they ever go to a concert or an event and there's a lot of people and everybody stands up, she often has said, she said, I turned to Ronan and I said, what can you see? Tell me what's there because she can't see. Emma, if Jesus was passing by, would have needed a tree like Zacchaeus. I was at the Taylor Swift concert earlier this year. My children bought me tickets to go, as you know. And um, I go to, and I'm sitting up in the stands and when it, it was all over, I walked down to uh, I walked down to see what it would have been like if I'd been at ground level, and I stopped and saw one of the security gentlemen, and I said to the security guy who was there at the gate, I said, "What's it like being on the ground?" And he goes, yeah, "You can't see very well." I said, "What do you mean?" I said, "I thought it would have been far better than sitting up in the stands." He said, "He said he said the, the crowd is so big, so many people." And he said, he said, they just can't see. So they end up looking the whole time at the screen because they can't see Taylor Swift. Whereas when you're in the concert, if you're sitting in the stands, you can see her all the time. But you, they, couldn't, they couldn't see her. And so you end up looking at the screen because you can't see. And particularly if you're a shorter person, it's extra bad. But if you're up top, you can see the whole thing, the stage, all the lights on the stage. Well, you don't get any of that when you're standing on the ground. But you do get proximity. I'm sure there's great value of it. Well, here is Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus would have been better if he had been in the stands at a Taylor Swift concert because he would have seen. But what's he done? He's got, it says, well, he, he was trying to see who Jesus was, but on account of the crowd, he could not because he was short in stature. So he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore tree to see him because he was going to pass that way. Now, and so, and so a sycamore tree was this kind of a fig tree uh, that grew uh, in that part of the world. And often it had decent branches in it. They often made furniture and other things out of it. He climbs this sycamore tree right in the path of where Jesus was gonna go through, where Jesus was gonna go through. Um, he runs ahead, he gets himself re uh, ready. Um, now, Zacchaeus is ready and he's waiting. And uh, look at verse five. It says, when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and said to Zacchaeus, Zacchaeus, hurry and come down for I must stay at your house today. When he gets to the place where Zacchaeus is, he, he, he sees him, Jesus sees him, and says, Zacchaeus, I must come to your place today. In other words, what Zacchaeus was looking, Jesus sees him. Jesus says, I must come to your house. And we can read it at the level of your physical house. But what Jesus was really saying is, I must come into your house of who you are today. I must come into you today. Uh, see, what's, what's Zacchaeus done? Zacchaeus has put himself in the place where Jesus is about to pass by. Where Jesus is about to go, where is about to go through. Some years ago, I was doing an event, and uh, it was in a place we'd had a few security kind of issues and f uh, frightening things that had happened around that time, and we had hired a security company to send security people to be there, and they just sit in the crowd, and they're not very far from me, and you would never know they're there. And one of, on one occasion, there was this very large, big man, a big, strong man. And he comes on the very first night and he's sitting there and I look at him a few times as I was talking through the night and he looked completely bored stiff. Oh, he looked so bored. And he came every night and I was there for a, a, a week. And then on the, on the very last night, on the very last night, 
who should turn up with him was his wife. And he introduces me to his wife and I didn't really talk to this gentleman a lot, and, uh, but I talked to him a bit. And uh, his wife, when he wasn't looking, turned to me and said, on the very first night, my husband, the security guard came and a security man came and, and he turned to me and he said, you've got to come, you've got to come, you've got to come to this thing where, where, where he's speaking. And, and she said, I've been wait, I work at night, so I haven't been able to come. And, and, and she came and she said, so I've come tonight. And she, and, and he, and he's, and she said, she, she just cried through the entire night. Uh, it was amazing. At the end of the night when people had gone and, and, and he came to say goodbye to me and we were all leaving, uh, he and his wife both came to me and, and he shared with me that how deeply they had been touched by the presence of God at this event. And it turned out they hadn't been and they said we hadn't been, they had been to church for 23 years, but they did have church in their background, but they had fallen away. And, and it really touched me and spoke to me about the fact that sometimes we've got to put ourselves in the path of hearing. And see, he, he did it because his work sent him there. He didn't choose to come. But there's something about the path. There's something about the path of hearing what, 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 God, what God is doing and where, where God is going to be spoken about and, what, and where God is uh, along the way. Well, many people are searching for something, aren't they? We meet, meet so many people who are searching we meet people who are successful and searching. We meet people who aren't, who've had real great difficulties in life and they're searching. And so, so many times people go to church or they seek out something spiritual in the hope that that will speak and that will touch that, that itch within them for, for trying to satisfy this search that's within them. Uh, I remember my, my daughter, one of my daughters saying to me once, she said, when I was young, I heard her telling a group of friends Recently, she said, when I was young, she said, Dad, when he was working with youth and young adults, he used to do these events and, and, and people would come and, and people would encounter God. And, and she said, she said, I knew a day would come when it would be my turn to come and to have that experience with everybody in all the fun and everything else that happened. But I knew that that would come and happen to me. And she was waiting to put herself in the path of where Jesus was. Can I ask you this question? And I'm not going to answer it now, but I'm going to come back to it in a minute. Why do some people find God when they go to church and others do not? Again, why do some people find God when they go to church and others do not? We should put that on the screen. Why do some people find God when they go to church and others do not? I'm going to come back to that question in a minute. In verse 6, it says, so he hurried down, Zacchaeus hurries down the tree and was happy to welcome him. See, when Zacchaeus had this encounter with Jesus, that all of a sudden Jesus looks up at him and says, hey, Zacchaeus, I'm coming to your place. I'm coming to your life. I'm coming to where you are. Zacchaeus is what, like, wow, I'm happy for you to come into my life. I'm happy. Now, at that point in time, verse 7, we read, all who saw it began to grumble and said, he's gone to be the guest of one who is a sinner. Everybody else looks around and goes, oh, you don't know who that person is. You don't know who that person is. You don't know what they're like. They're a sinner, meaning they're contravening the rules, the laws, meaning they're not a good person. They're acting in ways that they shouldn't. Sometimes I know in my life, and I know in other people's lives that the, that grumbling voice that's often within them isn't anybody else. It's ourself speaking to ourselves. It's us stopping and going, well, I'm not really, I'm not really able to be with God. I'm not, you know, I'm not really able to be with God in that way. You know, I'm not. So we hurried down and he was happy to welcome him. Uh, in verse 8, it then goes on and it says, Zacchaeus stood there and said to the Lord, Look, half of my possessions, Lord, I will give to the poor. And if I've defrauded anyone of anything, I will pay back four times as much. Again, Zacchaeus stood there and said to the Lord, Look, half of my possessions, Lord, I will give to the poor. And if I've defrauded anyone of anything, I will pay back four times as much. 
When Jesus enters his life, because why he's put himself in the path, when Jesus enters his life, he's so affected that he changes. Now, the law said that if you've stolen something from someone, you should give back four times as much. So he's going to keep the law. He's going to do what he's meant to do. He turns around and he realises that his possessions that he has, the wealth that he has, has, been, has occurred because he's manipulated and he's stolen money when he's collected the taxes. And so he thinks to himself, I probably can't give that back to the people I took it from. Who do I, do I even know them? So he just, what's it say? Zacchaeus stood there and said to the Lord, Lord, because I've met you, half of my possessions, Lord, I'll give to the poor. And if I've, defra- if I, if I've defrauded anyone of anything, I'll pay back four times as much. What is, what is, what's happening to Zacchaeus? Zacchaeus' life has changed. Why? Because he put himself in the place of the path of Jesus. Jesus who was passing through. I've driven, I've done a lot of country driving out in the country, across the country. And sometimes you come across these little towns and the sign goes up, the name of the sign, and you drop your speed because you're going a bit fast. And you have no intention of stopping, but you're just going through. That's Jesus so often. So often we've got to go to the place where Jesus is. Then what did Jesus say? Jesus said to him, today, and to everyone around, he said, probably said this to his apostles, today salvation has come to this house because he too is a son of Abraham. For the son of man came to seek out and save the lost. Look at it again. Then Jesus said to him, today salvation has come to this house. He's a, because he too is a son of Abraham. And Jesus, I wonder if he would stop and say to people who go to the Catholic Church or the Anglican Church or the Pentecostal Church, when they return to church, I wonder if he would say, uh, today salvation has come to this place because this person who belonged here in the past, this son of this church, this daughter of this church, uh, they've come back. For the Son of Man came to seek out and save the lost. The whole point of everywhere Jesus was going was that we would know him, we would come to love him, and we would experience him more and more and more and more in our life, in our life. Why is it that people go to church, some people go to church, and don't encounter God? I think there's a couple of reasons for that. And I think there's a couple of reasons for that. I think sometimes the reason people don't experience God when they go to church is because sometimes people themselves who are in that church haven't encountered Jesus personally in their life. What they are is they have been born into it. They've been taken to it. They're going there out of a sense of guilt and routine and rule keeping. And the encounter in them is not as live as it could be, should be, that people, when they visit, come by and say, God is passing through here. Look at what has happened to these people. Look at who they are. If we are to be impactors, if we are to affect the world, if we are to transform people's lives, if we are, when people come into contact with us, when they ex- come and experience us, whether, we, whether it is here in the rooms that we are, whether it is online through our, through our impact of hosts, they have to encounter the presence of God because God has been encountered by us. If Jesus is not central in our life, if Jesus is not focused in our life, if Jesus is not uh, captured our life, Why would anybody else capture that? In this community, as we step forward, we want to make sure that anyone who would visit us, whether they go online and they listen to the hosts, whether they are in the places where we meet physically, whether people are sitting around a television at home or watching a screen in a hall, or they're in a place where where, where we're traveling through, or they're listening, If God is not in us, what are people going to encounter? 
I think back to that security man and his wife. I remember on those days, we had traveled across the country, our team. We had gone to put this event on. We were very, very confident. I remember Sandra, who's a member of my team and a, a wonderful person. Was, I remember Sandra saying to me, we just expect God to turn up. And the faith was evident in us. We knew before we had even landed in the city that God was going to transform people's lives. And the stories of life change that we have heard that have come from that event and continue to still hear, because we knew in advance, because in a sense, Jesus was going to pass through. And what we did was we created a place for Jesus to pass through. And the job of an impactor, the job of our community is to create experiences and moments where Jesus will pass through and people who are searching will encounter him. It did not surprise me at all. I was not surprised when I had the four hour lunch, which was only meant to be much shorter, that at the end of it, that these men stopped and said, look at what has happened here, right now, sitting around the table, the presence of God here, because that is what you do as people of impact. You create moments of the presence of God where people encounter him as they go through because you have encountered him, because you have encountered him. I think the second reason that people don't encounter God when they go to church is because it's not a welcoming environment. It's a place that you go to do, to do church but church, if you look at it, is the community of God's people, the community of people who have encountered God. And so there's meant to be something different about that community of people because of who you are, because of Jesus in us. And if Impactors is to be successful as a community, if it is to be a, a successful as a movement in all of its different expressions from in our homes to halls to online, then, then it, it's, it, it's beholdeth upon us who are the ones who are creating the place for Jesus to pass through, that we be a place of welcome to everyone, not just the people who keep the church rules, but every single person, sinner or person who's a saint, to everybody, to welcome them and to love them because of who Jesus is in us. If we don't welcome Welcome means to say, to embrace. Welcome is saying, we're happy to have you here. Welcome is saying, I'm happy to have you here exactly as you are. Now, uh, from time to time, Sandra, who helps me with all of our hosts and coordinates that for Impactors Online, we, every so often, every, every so many weeks, we all get together. And we have a series of meetings with all of the hosts around the world from Singapore and the United Kingdom and Canada and the United States and Australia. And these are all people who came forward and said, I'd love to be an Impactors host. And if you'd like to be an Impactors host, you can contact us. You just contact us and, and we'll give you the right training and set you up so you'd be able to. And one of the things that has come up in our recent meetings is, is that there's the opportunity as the message is going on for people to comment. And we've noticed that people don't say a lot. And so some of the hosts initially had, were saying, or well, maybe, maybe no one's there or no one's listening. And then we began to hear stories of people who said, I don't say anything, but I listen to the message. And then what touches my heart the most is listening to the conversation between the hosts as they share their experience of God and they share what they're hearing. The people who comment don't come and comment, I really like the talk that Bruce gave or whoever gave and the message they delivered. They never say that. What they say is, I, I loved being in the community of listening to these people whom I don't know, I, of the, listening to them together. I've also noticed another dynamic as we've been doing it is that the hosts are all growing closer together. When occasionally we have Zoom calls or where everyone can see each other, 
they're, they're excited to see each other because community is being built. A community of welcome, a community of people who themselves are encountering the presence of God. And God is there. And I've seen a holiness grow in our hosts. I literally have seen a holiness grow in our hosts as they have come to realize that they are being ministers of Jesus as they talk to each other, knowing other people are observing their community together. Community is powerful. So if we are to reach the world, if we are to create places for Jesus to move through, firstly, it's got to be because we've encountered Jesus. And then secondly, because we are people who welcome all who come, no matter who they are, and that we love them and care for them exactly for who they are. Well, a lot of it comes back to us, doesn't it? And the truth is, it means that every day, if you're an impactor, if you're someone wanting to have impact upon others, you have to keep growing in your relationship with Jesus. Uh, Father Des Williamson, who's the priest who shared faith with me when I was a 13 year old boy, is nearly 90 years old now. And uh, he was around 40 when I first met him. It was just, just before he was 40. And uh, he often shares with me when I talk with him from time to time. He's been following the Lord all his life. And as I've shared, and he continues to do it, he says to me, oh, Bruce, there's so much more of who God is. There's so much more of Jesus. And I kind of stop and go, you're 90 years old and you've been faithful through your whole life. Surely there's a, you, you've got there. And he keeps going, but there's more and more. And what he's really describing is the infinite nature of God. You can't spend you, you can't miss your time of prayer. You won't spend your time in prayer wastefully if you come before God over and over. As you change and as you're changed by the Holy Spirit, you're, there's a richness that comes. And I want to encourage you to make sure you pray every day. Make sure you pray. Read the scriptures and then have that heart that's open to God. What would happen if you and I believed that what we had could change our families, our mums and dads, our friends. What would happen if it was about us creating community and and saying we'll accept anybody and us being so transformed by Jesus that people even just getting into our orbit had an effect upon them that we could sit down at a lunch, a dinner, we could just be someone and that we carry something with us and we don't have to say something. That's what an impactor is. And imagine when all of those impactors came together, whether online or in the rooms where we are, whether it's a small group in, a, in, a, in someone's home, whether it's a bigger group in a hall or an auditorium. What happens if we all came together as impactors and we were saying to the world, I've encountered him because I got in his path and I'm going to build places. I'm going to build cities and towns and villages. I'm gonna build places in churches, in halls, in homes, online, where Jesus will pass through. And if you would come and be in that orbit, you will encounter Jesus and he will see you and he will say, I wanna come to your house. That's what we are doing. That's what we are about, creating places for people to encounter Jesus. And you, yes, you, can do that if you would but believe that he would use you to be the town, the city, the village that Jesus passed through. And as people met you, that they would encounter him in power. Loving Father, we give you thanks today because you're so abundantly good. Bless us today. May your Holy Spirit fall upon us today and allow us, Lord, to realize that it's you in us That is the only thing we have to offer. Allow our lives, our hopes and our dreams to be in you. Lord, may we be a place, a place, a path that you go through where people would climb trees, where people would stand in rooms, where people would sit at tables, not knowing how to find you, but just be in the presence of you. Whether it be a security guard, Lord God, whether it be just someone who drops us off and looks after us and just comes with us to help us. Whatever it is, Lord, allow your spirit to touch us. May we be impactors across the planet for your glory. And Father, we make this prayer 
in Jesus' name, through the power of your Holy Spirit. Amen. Hey, God bless you all, everybody. There's so much more to say. And, uh, but let's leave it there today. We'll come back next time. My prayer is that you would pray and that you wouldn't have heard, but you would experience the voice of God today. Hey, God bless you. See you tomorrow. Uh, through the daily devotionals where I'm going to be talking all this week about stages of faith, how we walk in, walk with God and also uh, there be a place where we pray together. Hey, God bless you. And don't forget wherever you are, God's never ever far from you. As we conclude today, I want to ask you, would you partner with me in sharing the gospel? Recently, I was at an event and there was a whole number of people doing different things. There were people working in the kitchen. There were technical people on computers and screens. There were people who were welcoming people to the event. There was some of us up the front who were about to talk and do the things we did. And it was all of us together making the gospel work. And that's why it's called the, the body of Christ. And one of the ways we also operate within the body of Christ is when people serve through their giving. The scripture talks about one of the spiritual gifts being the gift of giving. And I want to ask you if you would exercise that gift and you would help me share Jesus to more and more and more people. I, I can't do this, as I keep saying, I can't do this without you because we're meant to be the body of Christ. Would you help me? Would you maybe become a faith builder partner if you're not someone who gives every month to make it possible for us to do this? You determine how much you contribute or give from time to time in order that more people would know Jesus. Um, you can go to our website or you can go to this address. Uh, you can go to the Give tab and I pray that you would be blessed abundantly. Why don't we pray? Loving Father, I give you thanks that it is an act of worship every time we give. Allow our hearts to be lifted up to you. We give you thanks. We give you praise. We give you glory because you are so abundantly good. Hey, I want to say thank you to all of you for being with us. I look forward to seeing you next time. And don't forget, wherever you are, God's never, ever far from you.